Relations between Turkey and France have reached their lowest point in recent memory. The two countries have found themselves on the opposite sides on many issues. From the war in Libya to disputes in the eastern Mediterranean, the two NATO allies have repeatedly traded public barbs and threats. And those disagreements were on full display at a regional summit hosted by France, which was supposed to address maritime tensions. Not present at the summit, Turkey blasted French President Emmanuel Macron's earlier remarks when he said he would get tough with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. This year has seen Ankara and Paris face off in a series of disputes, including a heated naval standoff in June that almost reached crisis point. And the energy-rich waters in the eastern Mediterranean have become an even more dangerous flashpoint. Last month, France participated in naval exercises with Greece near waters claimed by Turkey. So, have relations between the two reached rock bottom? Is there room to improve or is the Mediterranean region headed for an era of tensions? And joining me now, François Bourgat, who is a member of the European Council on Foreign Relations, and Giray Sadek, who is an Associate Professor of International Relations at Ankara Yildirim Beyazıt University. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. Giray, so have relations between Turkey and France reached rock bottom? Have they been ever worse than this? Uh, well, um, we may need to dig up for that, but uh, when it comes to the current moment, certainly it's one of the bottom lines, uh, especially after recent uh, French uh, involvement in the Eastern Mediterranean in support of one-sided support of uh, Greece and Greek Cypriots against Turkey, uh, make the issues worse in addition to uh, the already brewing conflict, such as in Libya, in Syria, we see France uh, all in the front uh, against Turkey. Mm -hmm. So this year, France seems to have been especially active in directly confronting Turkey, whether it's, as you've just mentioned, Eastern Mediterranean or in Libya or in Syria. Francois, what is behind this? Behind this, uh, let's put some history. Uh, Turkey... Um, is the strongest, the most powerful non-European player in the Mediterranean. So there's always been some kind of competition between the two. But, but in 2002, there's been an, a new layer, which is AKP uh, coming to power. And then a third one, France adhering uh, in the context of the post-Arab spring to this alliance with the Emirates, with... Saudi Arabia, with uh, Egypt, uh, more explicitly than ever with Israel. And, and these two last layers, they connect because the narrative of this alliance, which we could label counter-revolutionary mm -hmm. uh, alliance, is using the vocabulary, the narrative of criminalizing political Islam, whatever it means. Yeah, but... So, Mm -hmm. This is why the situation is uh, is becoming uh, dangerous because we, when Macron opposes Turkey, we do not know if he is doing a rational understanding of France's interest in the Mediterranean or if he is fueling his own electoral interest because it is uh, now uh, become a, a, a kind of mode, uh, a kind uh, of game to yes. criminalize uh, Muslims inside so it's become a domestic yeah Mac macron so in his this... yes but but macron in his latest statements he said he doesn't have any problems with the turkish people but with the erdogan government we see he has no problems with the pkk he has no problems with haftar in libya or sisi in egypt or any of monarchies in the gulf so um Giray, is macron's confrontation mm. with turkey directly tied to his personal view of erdogan uh, that is uh, clearly a factor, especially in terms of recent escalation. Uh, we see a, a way for that. But other than that, targeting uh, a democratically elected leader is another faux pas in French terms. And uh, coming uh, flash forward from history, it is that uh, we need to keep in mind um, that France is no longer the gendarmerie of the Sahel region. Neither it is the big brother in eastern Mediterranean. 
uh, in which uh, regions Turkey has uh, historical and substantial roles, especially in Eastern Mediterranean with the longest uh, coastline. Uh, so uh, insisting on this French narrative, for whatever reason, it could be, as earlier speaker said, for domestic political gain or uh, populist rhetoric of Macron, but still uh, that, uh, that hurts EU, that hurts NATO, and ultimately that hurts France and leads uh, the Eastern Mediterranean and MENA region further into instability and leading to lose-lose situation, uh, meaning further instability for yes. the region and the countries of the region and for the France in the end, in terms of the effect of France. Yes, yeah, so, uh, François, before the uh, MED7 summit in Corsica, Macron said Turkey is no longer a partner in the region, ignoring the fact that the Turkey has the longest coastline in the Mediterranean. Do you think other countries in this regional group um, agree on Tur taking a firm stance against Turkey in the upcoming period? No, I'm not really convinced. Uh, let's remember, if we want to be optimistic, that Macron has used the uh, hard, uh, aggressive vocabulary uh, yesterday. But uh, on a previous issue, he has also said that there would be negotiation in this issue. So it means that Macron recognized this, that the demands of uh, exclusive economic zone by Turkey are not illegitimate and they will be negotiated. So I think that once again, there is the hard talk for domestic issues, but there is no way out of a more rational attitude by Macron in the coming weeks, especially since we may say that EU is not fully um, unanimously following him on this in this direction. Yeah, uh, Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel has tried to play a mediating role between Turkey and Greece. Will France's uh, confrontational approach hurt that effort? And can you, uh, Giray, speak on the differences between mm -hmm. Berlin and Paris and how they are addressing the tensions between the two NATO allies? That is really important. Uh, Berlin is uh, approaching in a more balanced manner and uh, trying to mediate a solution, trying to have EU as a power broker, if not power broker, at least honest broker. But French efforts hold, hurt also EU legitimacy as an honest broker by declaring uh, their support in recent Met 7 summit to, to Greeks, uh, uh, France, and therefore uh, EU robbed themselves from whatever legitimacy left uh, to be considered uh, as honest broker uh, in this issue. And in that regard, it's important to remember those MED7 block is seven EU countries with Mediterranean coastline, but they are not representative of EU. We need some 20 plus members. Yeah. On top of that, they are not representative of Eastern Mediterranean because only two of them uh, have uh, some minor costs in Eastern Mediterranean, which combined uh, Greek and Greek Cypriots have less than uh, Turkish uh, coast and uh, yeah. also we need to consider Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. So they are not representative either of EU or the region. I understand. So Francois, could France's hostility towards Turkey uh, be tied to Paris's declining influence in its uh, former colo colonies in North and West Africa? Those Because those regions are now, Turkey is expanding its uh, influence. What do you make of it? Yeah, de definitely this, this is part of, 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 of the frame of the picture. Uh, you know, France uh, needs every single uh, so-called democratic elected leader needs an enemy. Um, rationally, France should oppose Putin because in the case of, uh, of Libya, for instance, yes. uh, we could say what we say to Turkey, we could say to Putin, but Putin is a little too big. So Macron has chosen... Uh, uh, chosen to, to uh, address uh, Erdogan. So I think uh, so, once again, we must remember that in the position of Macron, there is a double um, ambition. One is foreign policy. The other one is a dom domestic issue, uh, hard talk against a Muslim uh, political player, the strongest of the landscape. Uh, but but if, I, if we conclude on a positive um, direction, I think that it is absolutely impossible that France sticks to its confrontational uh, language. It will move 
toward renegotiating these very vicious uh, decisions of international so, so law. Do, so do you uh, think? Do you think? Economic exclusive. Do you think not maybe France, but Macron considers Turkey to be a bigger threat to NATO than Russia? It, it is not a, a bigger threat. It's an easier threat to address, politically speaking, than opposing uh, Putin. Uh, I don't know if you know the, the, the story of uh, uh, President Sarkozy uh, being uh, assaulted privately by Putin. They, they know that uh, the idea, uh, I'm not meaning that it's easy to confront uh, President Erdogan, but it's easier than confronting Putin. So I don't think that uh, the core of the understanding of Macron is that uh, President Erdogan is dangerous, more dangerous uh, as a rival than Putin is, but it's yes. a more common enemy to address. So, Girai, how do you think this tension uh, be dealt with moving forward? Moving forward, something to, uh, to add. Uh, perhaps Macron tries to calculate that, not that Erdogan is uh, easier than Putin, but he may have the impression that uh, French narrative against Turkey is likely to gather more uh, EU support and to limited extent support from the region uh, than against Putin. But uh, that may be a significant miscalculation here. And earlier speaker mentioned France double ambition. That's to the point. Uh, there is also France double standard we need to talk about. On the one hand, France is calling, including in recent summit, uh, for um, de-escalation in Eastern Mediterranean yes. and negotiation and so on. On the other hand, France is uh, pressuring Greece to demand preconditions for uh, NATO deconfliction talks, yeah. asking for a uh, lion's share of Greek arms imports for French defense industry, and asking bases uh, in Greek from Greek Cypriots. Yes. So uh, those are totally uh, mismatches, to say the least, uh, if not discourse action disparities, which are significant to hurt Macron yes. and France in the long All term. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining us on Straight Talk.